I often get phone calls from parents who are upset with the way the school has handled a situation with their child in school. In some cases, they were given a referral and may be subject to an expulsion hearing. Sometimes the family feels as though the school has not properly communicated information to them about their child. In situations like these, I encourage the families to try the normal avenues before taking any aggressive actions. If your child falls within the federal guidelines because they have an individual education plan, also known as an IEP, or a 504 accommodation plan, certain rules must be followed by the school and how they administer punishment. I have been involved in some cases where a child slipped through the cracks of the system and was never really properly diagnosed. Once the proper testing was done, we were able to avoid expulsion from the school system and instead fashion a plan to ensure the proper education of a child with special needs. Oftentimes, parents do not want labels put on their child, which I can completely understand. However, in today's zero tolerance climate for certain offenses, your child may be subject to serious consequences if not properly designated. If your child is considered to be mainstream, rules are set forth for that process as well. The student code of conduct is the first thing the school presents at any administrative hearing where the school is seeking expulsion. That is why school districts have every student and parent acknowledge the student code of conduct and its changes every year. Most families never really sit down and read the requirements within it. In almost any school-related issue, the code of conduct specifies the rules and laws the administration will be using if they try to discipline your child. I suggest that you as a family sit down and read it and not wait until there's an issue. For example, if you're dealing with wanting to appeal a referral, there are normally very limited time constraints in which you have to appeal. Most families don't even contact me until after the time frame has already expired. And then it's too late. If I have any advice for a family dealing with the educational system, it would be that you are your child's best advocate. Being educated on the requirements facing your child and even discussing them at home could deter many issues. If you are not sure what to do, call me at Proley Laporte and Mulligan for a free consultation.